Okay, today is a very special day here at North Glen Community Church, and um, we traditionally have done our deacon ordination services on Sunday evening. This will be the first time of my recollection that we've done it Sunday morning. And the reason I, we wanted to change it, and to, just to let you know, guys know, we are today we are ordaining Warren Henley as our new deacon. So let's get a hand for Warren. I wanted to ask a question because I, I got a figure in my mind. How many here have never been to a deacon ordination service? Have never been. Okay, how many people have? So I can... So I, I was predicting about 90%. It's probably close to that. But it's... Um, I just want to give you three reasons why that I wanted to do this on Sunday morning. Number one, so the entire church would be a part of this. So, so you would all be able to experience because I know how it is. Sunday night we call you back and think we get busy. We, we do things and a lot of times probably maybe just a little bit of the church would be able to make it back. So this way the entire church gets to be a part of this. And number two, I uh, wanted to make this an extra special day for Warren, you know, to, ha to see the support of the church, and so uh, I thought that would be good to, to have that. Also, so the church could see the biblical role and qualifications of what a New Testament deacon is, because there's a lot of perceptions of what a deacon is and what a deacon's role is in, in various denominations and churches, that it, it's something that um, I can tell you this, when I became a pastor, I made a commitment that I, to Jesus Christ as his pastor, because he's the head of this church, I would not hold on to the tradition of man at the expense of God's word. Because uh, to me, God's word is more important than what uh, traditions are. I mean, traditions are great, but if they don't line up with the word of God, I really don't have a lot of use for it. I hope you don't either. I mean... We, man can make all kind of rules and regulations and this and that, and, but really when it comes down to it, we want to stay true to the Word of God. Right? Amen? Amen? And to the purity of His Word, because that's really, that's the only direction the church has is, is the, following the Word of God and the, and the Holy Spirit as He teaches us. So I want to take a look at what the Word of God teaches to get an understanding of what the deacon's role is in the church and just want to let you know right off the bat that the deacon's role it's not a deacon body okay a lot some churches have deacon bodies where they are governing and ruling over the church that is not biblical sorry um, they are ministers of mercy and you're going to see that in in God's word they are ministers of mercy taking care of the poor and the needy, and also a huge part of the job is assisting the pastors and the elders of the church. That, that's a, a big part of it. It's not a deacon body overseeing the church, but a deacon ministry assisting the pastors to help the needs of the church, to meet the needs of the church, and, 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 and just doing it the biblical way. And the deacon ministry is very, very important. Very, very important. And I want us to open our Bibles up, or you can look on the screen to Acts 6, chapter 6, 1 through 4. And many scholars believe this is um, the birth of the deacon ministry. And I'm going to read the first four verses, then we're going to pray. Or how about let's pray, then read the Word. How about that? So we can open our eyes. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for this awesome opportunity today to... Open up your word, and, and Lord, just speak to us. As your, as your awesome, the song, Word of God, speak, Lord. Speak to us today, Lord. Lord, help us to be a church that um, is in, just our, our foundation is based on your word, Jesus. You know, we, we want to follow you, Lord, and I want to just thank you, Lord, as I, as I continue to study your your word, I, I see the, in, the importance of your church and, and how much you love your church. And, and Lord, I pray that we have a, a love affair as a body of believers with your church, Lord. Our love affair with, 
with each other and, and most importantly, our love affair with you. Lord, that we would put you number one in our lives, Lord. So, Lord, as we read your word, Lord, let it come alive in our hearts, minds, and our souls. And let it uh, today be the day that we get a better understanding of, of what it means to be a deacon and what it means to um, just support and encourage and pray for our deacons and our leaders in this church, Lord. And, and we just pray that you just move in a, a mighty, mighty way here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read the first four verses in Acts chapter 6. And it says, Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right, <coughs> excuse me, it's not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom, he will, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Okay, looking at verse 1. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. The leaders of the church did not have enough help to look after every member of the church. So um, what they, they wisely did something. They, they did, they've seen a need there and they wisely got together. And the church had a desperate need uh, for another level of ministry in the church. And that could reach every single member. You know, because it's important that none of us be left behind. You know, the, so many scholars as I said believe that this was the birth of the deacon ministry and without this important ministry this awesome ministry uh, the church suffers and the church will would suffer without that and so with that we go to and the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and said it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables so the leaders were called the, the, the entire church together they called them together to try to to uh, acknowledge that there was a serious problem in the church. And the leaders spoke of their primary call and mission was, as it says here, that, that it was give the preaching of the word of God. Okay? So with this, this is an area where I struggle with as a pastor. I struggle with it because I don't... I, I let myself get involved with too many things in the church. And, and one of the problems is we are in desperate need of deacons in this church. We are in desperate need of deacons in this church. And I'm hoping that today, one of my prayers is today, that there's future deacons in this congregation right now that are ready to step up and serve in that capacity. And believe me, the leaders are looking and watching you and always looking for um, leaders to step up. So... Um, it, it, it's, it's important, and, and my opinion, and this is just my opinion, we should have a minimum of four deacons in this church, a minimum, bare minimum. That should be the bare minimum. Right now, we are at two, so we're not even halfway where we should be at the minimum. So, um, because the, the deacon ministry can, can be such an asset and a help to the pastor and to the leaders of the church and, and, to the, and to the congregation and can make a huge difference. And without that ministry thriving, the church suffers. And so that, that's why this is, God is really laying this on my heart pretty heavy because I, I'm feeling, as a former deacon, I, I, I still have a deacon's heart, but I understand that how important the role of the deacon is. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But the leaders of the early church suggested that the others be appointed uh, to minister to the needs of the church, which, you know, which, as anybody knows, in this church especially, you know, I say that because there's a lot of needs in this church. That, and I'm sure it's like that in all churches, but I, I see a, a huge need in the churches today. But the Greek word for serve tables here means to minister to, to serve, and to wait upon. And the deacons have to be humble servants of God, humble men of God, serving, serving God. And, and 
we have to realize that all leaders and, and the leaders in the church should be the most humble people in the church. We, we, should, we should be humble. We're, we're not tyrants. We're not, uh, sometimes, you know, how, you know how you can see it at your job when sometimes people get titles and they, they, they start, you know, they get power and they start, they don't know how to handle it and they just kind of go haywire. But I uh, just, just want to talk about, so what are some of the qualifications of being a deacon? Okay, so I want us to look at, um, there's two places in the Bible that talk about this. And one, uh, we're going to look at Acts 6.3, talks about some right here. And it says, Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom you, we will appoint to this duty. So we see here, uh, this, this scripture gives us three qualifications. One being of good repute, or in other words, an honest man, you know, uh, honesty is, is pretty important as, as, a, as a leader. You know, we want to be honest. Uh, the second thing it says here is full of the Holy Spirit. And full of the Holy Spirit is important. And, and when you're full of the Holy Spirit, what that is, is the fruits of the Spirit, as we know, are they will display love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. This is, this is what a, a Spirit-filled person looks like because I just described to you what the Holy Spirit, who He is. He, 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 he is the fruit of the Spirit, and, and them attributes, that is what, we, what they will be displaying. And then, and, it, and, and number three, full of wisdom. Full of wisdom, able to discern. It's important to have discernment, as, and, and you get wisdom. And that's one thing I hope you do. I know I'm constantly praying for wisdom. In fact, right now I'm going through the book of Proverbs with someone and praying over that because to receive wisdom, you know, because I, I, I need wisdom. You need wisdom. Book of Proverbs. I, um, there's 31 days in May, so I'm t doing 1 through 31 to uh, receive the wisdom and, and so that and able to discern well. And you have to know God's word to have wisdom and discern well. Uh, it goes to Acts chapter 6, 4, it says here, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The basic purpose and huge asset of the deacon is to assist the pastors and the elders to allow them to focus on prayer and the ministry of the word of God. And I can tell you this, church, your pastor is under, I don't pray enough and I'm not in the word of God enough. And I'm, in the, I'm, I'm praying, but I'm not in the word, but I need to get in more. I need to be on my knees more. I'm not praying enough. I'm not satisfied where my prayer life is. And, and, and part of that is because I'm spreading myself thin doing more, multiple things that I shouldn't be doing. That I, I'm, I'm, I'm already, you know, with working a full-time job, I, I, it doesn't leave me a lot of time. So I need a lot of deacons to help. I really do. And that's why I'm telling you, you got, we, it's time to step up, step it up in the church. You know, uh, we, we, got, we got to get this right so I can be on my knees as a pastor and I can be in the word. So I, you know, ultimately, I, I, Tony Evans is one of my mentors and I love Tony Evans. And he spends uh, approximately, he says, between 25, about 25 hours a week in, in preparation for a sermon. 25 hours a week. I don't have 25 extra hours a week. Even if, you know, there's just not enough time in a day, but I would love to be able to spend that much time in the Word of God to come up and preach and be that prepared. But that is part of what the call of the elders and the pastors to, is to be devoted to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. So with that, the, as it says here, the great ministries of the church are twofold, prayer and the ministry of the Word. Therefore, a senior pastor must give his life to these two ministries and not be distracted and diverted from them. And I am definitely distracted and diverted from them. So therefore, I, God has laid heavy on my heart. I know I said it once, I'm going to say it again. Heavy on my heart, a need for deacons in the church. It, it's, it, it's vital. It, it, it's so important. It is prayer, church. It is prayer where the pastor, I have to hear from God. I'm saying this because I'm showing you the importance of the deacon ministry. I have to hear what God wants me to speak to you guys. You know, it's, it's vitally important that I do that, that I talk and I listen t to God. And I must live on my knees before God. I should be on my knees hours and hours a day. 
I should. The word, it is the Word of God also that speaks to me. And I, I, I just want to say this about the Word of God. I mean, I've been studying God's Word for 32 years now, and never has it been more powerful than it is today for me. I, I, I'm just so in love with the Word of God. I got like four or five different Bible studies I'm doing. Uh, I love the Word of God, you know, and, and, um, and it's seeking God's face. It's not so much learning. It, it's, 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 it's knowing who God is and letting Him teach me to be the man that God wants me to be. So, deacons of the church play a vital role in assisting the pastor and frees him up to keep him in the word and keep him on his knees praying. Look at Philippians 1.1. Philippians 1.1, and this is the first clear mention of deacons in the New Testament. And it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and the deacons. Okay, in the New Testament, deacons are always associated with the overseers. The pastors and the deacons are meant to complement one another. They're meant to complement one another, and the pastors and elders take care of the pastoral, and the deacons assist the leaders as ministries of mercy again, because the needs are many. The needs are, are many. The main work of the deacons is, t- is to oversee people's practical, material needs. Deacons care for people's welfare, and, and, and we desperately need it. And I know this church has got to feel the effects of not having the proper amount of deacons in the church. I know we, I know we feel that. And in many churches, deacons are, again, their own body and sit on the board, executive board and make decisions. That is not biblical. I just talked to, I just talked to a, a deacon last week who came and visited our church. I'm not getting into the details, but I'll just tell you this, that part of the struggles they're having is because of the mismanagement of the deacon ministry. Uh, the deacons are not ruling over the church, and, 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 and that's just not the way it's supposed to be. And the deacons are a blessing to the people, a, a huge blessing. I mean, the deacons are... are they serve and support the pastor. I know um, 25 years ago, I was ordained as a deacon in this church. And I loved supporting my pastor. You know, there was one time when I was, one time with the pastors that I served with, that I had a disagreement with one of them. So I took him on the side and I talked to him. And that's the proper way to do it. I didn't call him out in front of the church and say, it's not that I had a disagreement. I just didn't feel like we, that was where, what, where, I just thought something wasn't quite right. So I talked to him about it, and we had a great conversation. And, and, it, and I, I just want to say that because my, my role, I felt, was to support him. The, 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 the several pastors that I was here as a deacon on is to support them. And I'm going to tell you, just give you a little heads up, Warren. As a deacon, sometimes people used to use me to get to the pastor. And that is wrong. I even had someone take me out to dinner or lunch, whatever it was. I don't know what you call it. I can't remember which, which one it was. Nothing fancy. But take me out to, to get me against my pastor. Well, I can tell you this, it didn't work because my pastor was right and he was wrong. And just because he was my friend and a fellow deacon wasn't going to deter me to, to not support my pastor who was following the biblical way of doing things. But I say that because... Um, Deacons are not used as pawns by the church to, to uh, go against the pastor. If you have a complaint against the pastor, come to the pastor. Because that's what Jesus would want you to do. Because I want you to. I, I'll say this out of love. If, you ha- if I ever say anything that's contrary to the word, if, I ever, if you see me or whatever, something's not quite right, please come to me and, and talk to me. I'm, not, I'm always available to talk to you. And I will assure you that I do not in any way intend to distort the Word of God or do anything, you know, I, and if I'm doing something wrong, I, 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 will, I will repent and turn and, and, and try to make it right. You know, I, I don't want to be a hindrance to this church. So I say that because the deacons, again, are, 
we are going to be working together, and, and I'm looking forward to as our deacons grow, as and we get this ministry up and running, that this church is going to be you're going to be blessed by what but why what the deacons do. Um, I want to look at some of the, some more important scripture that uh, for specific qualifications of the deacon ministry, and we find them in First Timothy three eight through twelve, and we see here nine qualifications here for deacons. And I'm going to not spend a lot of time on them, but I just want to just go over them. So turn your Bibles where you can look up here to 1 Timothy 3, and I'll read 8 through 12. Deacons likewise must be dignified, <clears throat> dignified not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, and let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. Okay, so we see here nine, I want to go over these nine qualifications. Number one, dignified. And I looked up the meaning of dignified. It's not something everybody might not know the... So the meaning of dignified is having or showing a composed or serious manner that is worthy of respect. And I just want to say this. Uh, Warren has a lot of respect in this church. I, I, I can tell you that. He has a lot of respect in this church. And I just want to tell you that I remember the first time Warren came in my office. I still remember that day when you sat down and told me, I'm here for you. If you need me, let me know. And I, and I, I don't get that a lot, so believe me, that meant a lot to me, and I haven't forgot it. And I can tell you this. Along the way, he has been there for me in many, many ways. I know he, he, he has a great uh, ability to teach the Word of God. And um, so he has helped me in that area and many other areas and as well. And number two, not double-tongued. You know, I think we know what double-tongued you know, means. I mean, we, we don't want uh, someone in that ministry that's double-tongued, that, that, that speaks out of both sides of their mouth. In other words, we, we want to speak the truth in love. That's, what, that's really what a deacon, and we're all called to do. We're all called to speak the truth in love. Not addicted to much wine. And I know I've talked to Warren. I know about this. You know, he t- told me some things about the drinking. And, and, you know, I know in the Bible, you know, drinking is, as far as drinking, you know, everybody knows the Bible intoxication is a sin you know getting drunk is a sin you know it, it, the bible doesn't teach abstinence but it does warn a lot against drinking doesn't it so i would just say be careful because i'm a former alcoholic so i know what alcohol can do i watched my father die from alcoholism so it's pretty close to my heart i i, I lost my father when i was 11 years old and I watched him. The only thing I can remember just right now when I see him, all I see is beer bottles and whiskey bottles. That's all I see because that's all I've seen. You know, every time I seen him, he was either drinking beer or whiskey. You know, but that's, he had that uh, sickness. So, so I know, and I know how it devastated our family, and, and I know what it did to me. You know, and so um, I'm just so thankful for Jesus, you know, that, 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 that cured me from that. So anyway, number four. Not greedy for dishonest gain. And I, I can say this about Warren. I have never seen that trait in him, at, not even in the littlest bit. The, no, no greediness or dishonest gain. I, I definitely have not seen that in any, any way. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And I think this is where Warren's one of his strengths is because he is a student of the Word of God. He, he's in the Word of God on a regular basis. He, he knows it, he, and, and he loves it. And I love his passion for the Word of God. It means a lot to me because I think that's lacking in the church. I think the church today is more biblically illiterate than they've ever, ever been. I think it's because we're so busy. We don't have time to read the Word of God. Some of us, some of us, probably not many here, but the only time they hear the Bible is when they're here. And I, and I know that's not true for this church, but there's a lot of people that don't open their Bible except on Sunday. But I know that not be true of Warren, and I'm thankful that he's in the Word. He's a student of the, and and, and the great thing is Warren is is a he's not a young man, but he's still hungry for the Word of God. 
You know, I love that. I love seeing a hunger. You, no matter what age you are, you can still be hungry for the Word of God. They must be tested first and found blameless. And I can tell you this, this is long overdue. I think this should have happened a long time ago, but he's been tested. You know, I've had my eyes on Warren for a long time, and I, as well as all of you, you guys might not think I'm looking at you, but I am because I'm looking for you, deacons. I'm looking for you. <laughs> so... Um, so I am watching you, and I'm watching what you're doing, and I and I and I want I I, I, I can tell you this about Warren. I, he is. I've watched him in the last year and a half. I would say I've seen him grow in his walk with the Lord. I, I have seen spiritual growth, and you you, you don't think you, which is encouraging to me because he's not a new believer. He is a seasoned veteran, but he still has sees room to grow. There's room to grow, and 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 that and that's where. Uh, your pastor, me, is you have a hungry pastor. I want it to grow and learn. I have not even come close to arriving, and I know Warren feels the same way. And that's why he hungers for the Word of God. Um, a wife who is faithful in all things, and I'm thankful for you to be here today supporting Warren. It's great to have you here. And um, yes. And Warren tells us a lot about you, so... Uh, he, I know he loves you with, with all his heart. I can guarantee that. I, I know I hear when he talks about you, he, 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 he loves you. And, and that's great. You guys been married how long? 46 years. You make my 29 years <laughs> love you. All right. Praise God. So I know, Warren, and now that you're both retired, that you, there's more time to spend together. So... Um, I'm just thankful that he has your that you you're supportive of him and um, just because uh, Warren is definitely has a love for this church and I and and he's also the hu husband of one wife 40, 46 years that's pretty good you guys have, have definitely been tested um, children and household manage well one of his sons is here but uh, yes. And um, I know all his, his children are grown and, and, and out the house, <laughs> but, but, um, but that's, you know, so he doesn't have that responsibility, but I'm, I know uh, I've heard, you know, he talks about his, his uh, past and some things that he's been through, and, and um, so it's encouraging to know that. Okay, so Acts 6.6 6 is... Move down. I didn't give that to you, but I'm sorry. I forgot to give you that. If you move down your Bibles, it says, These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. So one of the things that I want us to do today in this service is, I want, first of all, Warren to come on up here and have a seat in the hot spot. I want to see a raise of hands. How many people here have either been ordained as deacon, been ordained as um, pastors or elders? Or could, could I see a raise of hands? Could you come on up? Could you come on up? Is there anyone else here that has been ordained in the ministry? I know Rick had to go. Rick would be here, but he had to. He has a event he has to go to today. So. With that, um, I think with my microphone here, they'll be able to hear us. But I, what I want us to do now, I want us to join together as a church and pray for Warren. We're going to lay hands on him as, as they did in the early church, laid hands and prayed for, for him. And I want, uh, first of all, Warren, do you have anything you want to say? I've got to give you the, I'm doing all the talking. Let me get you a microphone. Oh. They thought I was running after them. <laughs> yes. Ah, give us a sermon. <laughs> it should be on. Yeah. Oh, you don't have a sound person. Which one is it? 
Is it this one? Testing. Got it. Yay. Sorry about that. Well, I don't really much know what to say since I haven't re rehearsed this for anything. Um, uh, I really don't like being the center of attention. You kind of feel like you're under magnifying glass, but I've been here for probably at least a decade and seen the church go through many changes and we all see one another and, and where we stand before the Lord. And like Paul said, the word is of absolute necessity in the church. Without it, you don't know where you're going. And um, I've read and studied the word, word for many, many years. I was saved when I was about 24 years old. Not that I always walked with the Lord, because I had a period in my life that I just really got fed up with everything. I was leaving, living a legalistic kind of life where you uh, feel like you have to do everything just right. And it just wore me down that I didn't want to go. My, my, my kids, and in this day, uh, the world owns almost everyone and trying to continue in the faith and bringing my children up in the faith. Um, I've had one child um, as, as an adult make a profession of faith and get baptized. Uh, the other two, I know that they know the Lord and as far as when they were young, they, they were there, but none of them really stay in it, though I, I, I wish they did, and I can't help but feel that I was part of the fault because I didn't totally stay there. But in the past decade or so of my life, I've been in, involved in reading and studying. I've studied with Paul and many other people. I went to Baltimore School of Bible for a little while, and, you know, it, I, I just have a passion for it. I love it, and if all of us did it, we would all be better people because to have a relationship with the God, with, with the Lord, you have to be honest with Him. You have to be in His face. And if you're in His face for very long, you know what you look like. And, uh, you know, I thank you all for your vote of confidence and hope that I can make everything good for you. And thank you. Okay, let's, we're going to join together, join together with us as we pray over Warren. You can, uh, you can stay at your seat if you want, or you can move up closer if you'd like, if you want to get close. And, um, okay, you want, you want to start? Yeah. Heavenly Father, I pray for this day and for Brother Warren and for the commitment he has for your life and for the church and for on the, on the, on the family that are here, Father. And more importantly, Father, for his walk with you. And Father, I just pray you strengthen him during this time. And Father, this, I don't care how old we are, we're just babes in Christ. And Brother Warren, Father, uh, I just pray that you guide him as, as, he's, as Pastor Paul uses him and the deacons, Father, to reach out and help uh, take some of the burden. I lift Brother Warren to you at this time, Father, and his family, and his wife, Father, which is so critical to the service, Father. I just praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Almighty God, I thank you and praise you for this day. I thank you for being here with us, and I thank you yes, for, for Brother Warren. And, yes. and Lord, I thank you for his dedication and service to you over these many, many years. Father God, I just, I ask that you just touch the one. And I ask that you surround him with your presence. That you just pour out your wisdom. Pour out your discernment upon him, Lord. Lord, just saturate his mind in him, Father, that, that he is always in tune with where you're working and what you're doing, Father. Lord God, I pray that you are always with him and remind him of who he is and how he is saved by grace, Lord. It's just empowered him, Father, to be the hands and feet of not only you, Lord, but of this church body. 
Father, as you have entrusted him as being a deacon, Lord, as being a minister of mercy. Lord God, just stay with him, Father. We need you each and every day, Lord. As this light is getting brighter, Lord, just protect him from the evil one. Yes, with his yes, family, Father. Lord. Yes. I just pray that this church celebrates and rejoices with the angels of heaven, Lord, as you have a new mission field for him, Father. I thank you so much for him. I thank you for his decision to choose to follow you and to do your work each and every day. I thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we know that you're here with us, your presence, Lord. We don't have to talk very loud because we know you hear our voice, Lord. And we just thank you that we can take this time to celebrate together Warren as a deacon of, of your church, Lord, of North Glen Community Church, Lord. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for his dedication and his love to you and his dedication and his love for this church, Lord. He has stood by this church through the good times and through the bad times. And Lord, he has supported me as pastor in the good times and the bad times. And, and I, I'm so thankful for, for him that you've sent him here uh, almost 10 years ago, Lord. And, and I never forget that day when he sat me down to tell me that he was ready to serve here at this church. He was ready to give his life for service to your church, Lord. And he has definitely done that through the teaching and ministering in this church, Lord. And we're so thankful and grateful uh, for him. And, and Lord, just pray for an anointing on him, a new anointing, Lord, that, Lord, that even today his hunger for you would just grow even stronger. His hunger for your word would even grow even stronger. His hunger to... Uh, be that minister of mercy that you're calling him to, Lord, that, that he would uh, be there for, for those and, and, and just be willing to serve his ch your church, Lord Jesus. And, and Lord Jesus, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for this ministry that you instituted in your church, Lord. And thank you that we, we are taking the example of the early church and looking at your word to, to see just what this ministry is all about, Lord. Lord, you left a lot of openings and a lot of different things that, for the deacons to do. Uh, Lord, it's an it's a endless job that is, is just, there's always needs in your church, Lord, as you know. And Lord, I, I thank you and praise you for uh, him today and just ask you uh, just to protect him from the enemy. Lord Jesus, Lord, anytime, uh, sometimes... Not any time, it's all the time, Lord, when, when someone is promoted within the church, Satan wants to, to get involved. So, Lord, we just pray a hedge of protection around him and just ask you to allow him to fight the good fight and realize that Satan has zero, no authority over him in his life. That you took all that authority away at the cross, Lord. And, Lord Jesus... Uh, we just thank you for the power that's in your blood and thank you that uh, we, we come here uh, in your holy presence, Lord, and, and we just ask you to bless Warren and his family and, and pray that you just uh, allow them to experience your presence. And Lord, that, that today is the beginning of a, a ministry that, that will bring blessings far beyond this world into, all the way into heaven, Lord. And we just give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yay. Have a, have a, a book for you to start reading. And what it is, is Paul's vision, not my vision. No, we're going to use this. We're going to use this to sign your certificate of ordination. We're going to give this to him back. But first, I want the people that pray to you to sign it. Uh, but this is uh, Paul's vision for the deacons assisting the elders with the care of God's church. So it's a good book to get started in the ministry. And for Tony and Ben, please sign this uh, for him. And uh, we will, you know, I didn't get a, um, a what's called, plaque or, yet. 
but we, we can certainly get you one um, or you can pick it out and we can take care of the cost of it either way but uh, we'd like to have that you know get, get you that too so with that we are going to close the service and we are going to uh, I'll say the blessings over the food and here's what what I would ask you to do is let let the um, elderly please go first have respect if you're young and healthy you can wait a little bit and let them go first so they don't have to stand as long uh, but I would encourage this is for all the church you know you know it, it, it's like a double celebration we, we planned this before the deacon ordination service but it worked out good that we're having a dinner on the same day so it, it, it's twofold so we're celebrating our partnership with the school and our new deacon uh warren so <coughs> let's let's pray father god we thank you we praise you lord we thank you for your word we thank you for this awesome ministry of deacons lord lord how desperately we need this ministry in the church, Lord. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that you continue to raise up uh, deacons in this church, Lord, so we can meet the needs of the church, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that you just be with Warren, Lord, and, and help him as he begins this new journey with you. And, Lord, that, that he would just uh, allow this to be, this ministry, to that he would surrender it to you, that he would let you receive all the glory and all all the praise lord and lord we just uh thank you and praise you for the opportunity we have <coughs> we pray for blessings over the food we pray that you just help it to nourish our bodies lord and lord we thank you for this opportunity to come together to fellowship in your name we pray all this in the mighty name of jesus our lord and savior amen oh forgot one thing <laughs>